Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're looking into the disappearance of Denise Jeanette Sullivan. She was only 15 years old and she was on vacation with her mother and her mother, either a friend or fiance, depending on where you read it. And it says they were in Moab, Utah. She was five foot tall and about 90 pounds. And this talks about them being on vacation. They ran into an adult male who claimed he had car trouble. The man then demanded money from the couple and displayed a gun. After shooting both adults, her mother died. He forced the child into his vehicle and drove away. She had brown hair. Last thing, it was about shoulder length and brown eyes. And it says, was forced off the road trying to escape in 1960 Volkswagen Beetle car route covered Denise missing. And I don't know who had which car. And this one is the Doe Network. The other one was NamUs. This one was NamUs. And the photo is on NamUs. And this is the Doe Network. It says she was 15 years old, 5 foot tall, 90 pounds. Previously fractured leg, known to use reading glasses. She was on vacation with her mother and her mother's fiancé, this says, Charles Boothroyd. According to Mr. Boothroyd, they encountered a man who claimed to have car trouble. He demanded money from them and had a rifle in his hand. The man shot Jeanette, killing her, and then shot Charles, wounding him, and abducted Denise by forcing her into his vehicle and drove away. A suspect, Abel Aragon. Shot himself when stopped for questioning at a roadblock by two FBI agents. And then we go to the Charlie Project. And there's three photos of Denise Jeanette Sullivan. I believe that's her mother. And that would be the friend or fiance. And that would be the man that abducted her. So, and this one says she was wearing a blouse, plaid pants, and either sandals or red sneakers. And then it has list mentions two vehicles. This said she lived with her mother and her four year old sister in Rockville, Connecticut at the time. And her mother was divorced and worked as a seamstress. And this says that Mr. Boothroyd was an acquaintance and had asked him to go on vacation with them to Utah that summer, and they agreed to leave, to join him, leaving the younger child at home with Jeanette's parents. The travelers were driving Boothroyd's olive green 1960 Volkswagen. Photos of Boothroyd and Jeanette are posted with a case summary. On July 4, 1961, the trio met a man near Dead Horse Point, 17 miles outside of Moab, Utah. He was heavy set with black hair and a dark complexion. He spent two hours with them, telling them the history of the area while they took pictures. He drove away in a tan sedan without telling anyone his name. Boothroyd and the Sullivans planned to spend the night in Moab, and it was getting dark, so they had two left at this point. Just a short distance down the road around the bend, they saw him, the man they had spent time with earlier, and he was pulled off the side of the road, lying underneath his car. They stopped to ask if he needed help, and the man said he was having engine trouble and asked for a flashlight. After Boothroyd gave him the flashlight, the man threatened all three of them with a 22 caliber rifle and demanded money. Boothroyd laid his wallet on the ground and Jeanette removed $250 from her purse, threw it on the ground and started to walk away. But the man shot her in the back of the head and shot Boothroyd twice in the face. Boothroyd survived his injuries, but Jeanette was killed almost instantly. The shooter rolled her body into a nearby ravine and left Boothroyd lying on the ground. Denise attempted to drive Boothroyd's car away, but the man chased her in his own vehicle, ran her off the road after a mile, after half a mile, dragged her into his own car and drove away. An oil worker at a rig two miles away heard the gunshots and the sound of the cars driving off and went to see what was wrong. He passed the abduction car speeding down the road and then the wrecked Volkswagen, then drove on and found Boothroyd still conscious up by the roadside. Boothroyd told him what he'd seen, and the oil worker called for assistance on his radio. It took two hours before the ambulance was able to arrive and take the man to the hospital. Law enforcement came shortly after that. They launched an extensive search to, for any signs of her, the kidnapper. 
The prime suspect was Abel Benny Aragon, an unemployed coal miner who lived in Price, Utah. A photo is posted with this case summary. His vehicle matched the description of the abduction car. When the FBI stopped him for questioning on July 6th, which I believe would be two days later, he shot himself in the head with a 22 caliber pistol. He was rushed to the hospital and died two hours later without regaining conscious. It was the day after his 35th birthday. He was a Marine veteran who was awarded the Navy Cross for heroism during World War II. He had no criminal records. Witnesses reported seeing him alone at 2 a.m. on July 5th, which was about four and a half hours after the shooting at Dead Horse Point. So by then, so he, that, that means he couldn't have taken her far. Um, he stopped. I wonder if he was sitting alone near where he would have put her, buried her or something. He stopped a truck driver, gave him an envelope, and asked him to mail it. The envelope contained money and a note addressed to Aragon's wife, telling her he loved her and their five children. It didn't mention any crimes. Five hours after the shooting, Aragon arrived at a mining camp at Polar Mesa, where he had stayed several times before. When authorities searched the area on July 10th, they found some of his clothing nearby under a rock. They found the 22 rifle that had been used in the shooting and hidden in the brush was a shovel identified as Aragon's. So, it, it doesn't sound like he, yeah, I wonder if that's where he buried her right there. I, to me, it sounds like he buried her and I, it sounds to me like they're not going to find her body. Unless they come up with some kind of, um, they might have, unless they have something where they can find buried bodies under the ground. Authorities determined from the paint scratches and other damage to his car that it was the same vehicle that rammed, rammed into Boothyard's car and forced it off the road. They also found a set of Aragon's tracks and a smaller set parallel to them, believed to be Denise's. They never found any trace of her. Foul play is strongly suspected in her case due to the circumstances involved. An extensive search turned up no sign of her. Her body may be somewhere in the Polar Mesa area. So that's the information. And so, and I went through the unidentified females and I didn't find anyone in that area. But that doesn't mean she has never been found. I just say I, I think that maybe he buried her. So anyway, she was quite a beautiful young lady, and she's still listed under the missing persons. So don't forget to pray for her, her family, her loved ones, and please feel free to leave comments, and have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.